Lots of times in the NFL, uh, your worth is based on your performance. And so when you don't have an opportunity to perform, um, it's a struggle trying to maintain what you feel like your worth is. And it's one of the things that I think faith-wise helped me get through that time. Uh, because I realized that my worth wasn't based on my performance out on the field. We all have those moments where we need a little encouragement to get through our day. Someone to remind us that we are not alone. Find peace. Embrace joy. Seek God daily. Welcome to Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. Our guest is Super Bowl champion quarterback Jeff Hostetler. Jeff led the New York Giants to their win in Super Bowl XXV some one and a half months after starting quarterback Phil Simms went out for the season with a broken foot. He tells us about growing up in a Mennonite family in Pennsylvania, the faith that his parents demonstrated to him at a young age, and his unlikely road to the NFL. Hi, I'm Jeff Hostetler, and I uh, played in the NFL for 15 years. Um, uh, strong Christian man that uh, loves the Lord and grew up in a, a great Christian family, and um, a father of three grown sons. I've uh, got four grandkids and just um, uh, one heck of a beautiful wife. I grew up uh, in a small uh, farming town. Um, I call it a farming town. It was uh, a rural area and uh, one of seven kids in a Mennonite family. So we had uh, dairy cows and 18,000 chickens. So um, we had lots of uh, chores to do uh, outside an awful lot, but uh, grew up in a real strong Christian family. Um, mom and dad that uh, led by example. Uh, my mom was the glue. Uh, she was uh, uh, a strong woman of faith and believed in the power of prayer. And uh, every day, um, you know, we knew where she stood. She loved the Lord and um, she passed that on to us, um, all seven kids. Growing up Mennonite, um, they were always uh, a tight-knit community, and uh, whenever something would happen that was negative or bad, um, people uh, all over the community, all over the state, uh, would come to help. And we experienced that firsthand. It was in 1969. I was, uh, at that time, eight years old, and I can remember waking up uh, with the whole ceiling aglow and wondering what was going on, and my mom was screaming, the barn's on fire. And uh, it was a complete devastation. It burned the barn down to the, the very uh, bottom. We had just put in, uh, I don't know how many thousands of bales of, of hay, and um, it was a difficult time because we knew mom and dad, uh, it was a real struggle because that was their livelihood. That was what uh, uh, allowed us to you know, maintain our, our living and put food on the table. And so. Uh, we didn't know how we were going to handle it, what was going to happen. And um, you know, through that time, we had people all of a sudden show up and do all this work, uh, the cleanup efforts, the things uh, that were necessary just to get us back to normal. Um, but uh, the Mennonite family, uh, as I call them, because uh, they do stick together and uh, they're there when, when uh, there's times of need and um, had a big impact on me because uh, you never know when uh, life changes and when things can um, go from top of the world to the very bottom. And uh, when those th things do happen, to have people show up uh, without words, just show up and help, um, it's powerful. I started playing football when I was, you know, uh, I don't even know when I started, to be honest with you. In the backyard, I had two older brothers that had started to play and it was always my two older brothers against my younger brother and I. So we used to get the, the tar kicked out of us, and, uh, um, but we did a lot of playing in the backyard uh, in between you know, doing, uh, doing chores and, and um, taking care of things on the farm. But uh, it was something that uh, we realized, um, and I say that as my brothers uh, would say too, that we were really talented. Um, God gave us the gift of uh, some athleticism, and uh, it was something that kind of uh, came naturally for us. And uh, never ever dreamed that 
uh, I would go to school, play football, and, and have my college paid on a scholarship to play football, and then uh, eventually be paid to play the game. And um, you know, I, I can look back at that, and I know that God had uh, a plan for me, has a plan for me, but that plan uh, included the game of football because um, uh, he's taken me from this little farm boy, this little Mennonite farm boy, uh, to the peak. And um, awful blessed to be able to, to uh, have that platform to go ahead and, and um, tell people about you know, my Savior, my Lord, um, and uh, what he can do in times of need and what he can do uh, when you think that it isn't possible, he can do. As a senior in high school, I was a quarterback and a linebacker. And uh, uh, after the first game, we lost our tailback. And so my coach came back and asked me if I would move from quarterback to tailback and let my younger brother be the quarterback. And I thought, yeah, I'll do that. So I actually never played quarterback my senior year. Uh, I was a parade All-American as a linebacker coming out of high school. So somehow God used that to take me into uh, a professional career and um, to the top of that professional career through uh, the Super Bowl. I started out at Penn State. I followed my two older brothers and um, started out as a freshman and played in five or six games as a quarterback uh, as a freshman, which was uh, um, pretty amazing at that time. And uh, started my sophomore year, started the first three games of the season as the starter and then uh, was told after that game, we had lost a game and uh, told that uh, he was gonna make a move, Joe was gonna make a move and he was gonna start another guy. And um, I, I had a very difficult time with that because I didn't feel like uh, I had deserved that. I felt like I had deserved to, to continue to be able to starter and, and to play. And it um, was a real frustrating time in my life, uh, trying to figure out why God, I've worked so hard uh, to get to this position, and I've earned it, and yet um, it's being taken away from me. I mean, what, what, what's the purpose of this, you know? And really struggled with, um, you know, where I was at, why I was there in my faith. And uh, again, go back to my mom and dad. Uh, my mom would constantly uh, tell me, Jeff, God's got a plan for you, and um, you know, you just have to keep plugging away. And seeing the example that my uh, dad would set, uh, being on a farm, there are things that always went wrong, and yet constantly, every day, get up and continue to plug away, continue to plug away. There was no quit. And so, um, you know, I, I had that mentality, uh, but it was, it was tough. Um, and just felt like, okay, uh, if I'm here, you know, God's got a reason for it. I've got to make the best of it. And was able to, at that time, just put it all aside. I remember my dad telling me that uh, don't let one person ever determine your fate. If God wants me to be the starter, I'll be the starter. If he wants me here, I'll be here. If he wants me elsewhere, I'll be elsewhere. And found real peace in that um, and was able to throw all these uh, things off my shoulders and just have some fun. I got a chance to play later in the season and played uh, probably one of my best games ever and uh, was told that I would start the next game and then I didn't. And then I was told I would start the bowl game, and I didn't. And I finally made the decision that, um, you know, it was time for me to move on. I know God wanted me uh, to play the game. I know he had a plan for me. I just didn't know where it was gonna be. Um, and he took me to West Virginia. When I came down, I fell in love with the coach. Um, I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with uh, the city of Morgantown. And, I fell in love with his daughter too. Uh, I saw her and I can remember at the time uh, seeing her and thinking, um, you yeah, know, she was cute. She had a boyfriend that was there. But uh, I can remember my mom telling me at the time, uh, she kind of nudged me and said, wow, she's really cute. You might want to see if you can date her. And you know, it was funny because I just said, come on mom. And uh, never really thought about it. But uh, a year or so later, uh, the opportunity seemed to, uh, God put us in the same place and there was a, um, um, a connection there. There was something there that uh, you know, drew me to, to her. And uh, sure enough, 34 years later, um, you know, I know the reason God drew me to her. She's, uh, she's my soulmate. Coming out of uh, uh, my senior year, uh, there was a lot of interest um, in me in the draft. Uh, I was one of the top two quarterbacks that they thought would go. And um, you know, I had never really thought about ever playing 
uh, in the NFL at the time. I think as a boy, you grow up and you, you kind of, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play here, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. But I really never can remember thinking that was my goal. Um, I really never had that goal. If it happened and it God led me in that direction and opened doors that I was uh, going to be there, I knew it was going to be because he wanted me there. And sure enough, uh, draft came along, and it was an up and down day. You know, it was a, it was a battle because I was supposed to be uh, taken in the first round, uh, one of two guys uh, to be taken, and uh, here neither of us got taken in the first. Uh, he ended up getting taken in the late second, and I was uh, uh, the third pick of the third. And so um, the New York Giants uh, was going to be my home, and I'm thinking, you know. What am I going to do in New York? What, what, what's it going to be like? Um, you know, there was some disappointment there, but there was excitement because I know uh, it was a new chapter and um, it was a place where God wanted me to be for some reason. My NFL career didn't start out as, uh, as I would have liked and uh, there was a lot of frustration. I didn't see the playing field my first year at all. And um, the second year I came in, um, was just looking for a way to get on the field to try to do anything that I could. Uh, I ended up being behind a starter that uh, uh, was his first year full-time starting, uh, my first year coming into the league, and he played well. He played really well. And so um, there was this sense of not knowing if I was ever going to get an opportunity, when it would come, uh, the pressure of it to see how you play the game, uh, the speed of the game. All these things were big jumps. Uh, from college into the NFL and so you know there were doubts uh, that creep into your mind when you don't get an opportunity to step out onto the field and you wonder you know can I do this um, and if you don't have an opportunity to do it you can't prove it to yourself or, or to others and uh, that's a tough thing to to be able to handle in that and I I, um, I know why God had me in the NFL I know why he had me in football if you look at my Bible uh, my Bible is outlined underlined um, pages turned down and all those times were during football. Uh, those were the times when, um, you know, my heart was, uh, was struggling and I needed uh, to know that um, you know, God had me and that he had a plan for me. And uh, I go through that at times and look and, and see the pain at times, the hope at times, uh, just through those highlights or, or underlines. And I know, you know, God had me there for that reason. He was teaching me a lot of things. Um, he taught me about patience. My mom was a prayer warrior, and so, um, you know, I know that she was constantly there and look back at times and know that the only way that I made it through some of those times um, was the prayers of uh, my family and, and members of the faith. During this six and a half years of struggle with uh, my career, I also had uh, my first son, and he was uh, less than 24 hours old. Uh, when he had his first uh, heart surgery. Um, two weeks later, he had his second heart surgery. At five months, he had his third surgery. At 11 months, he had uh, his fourth major surgery. And so um, I have this career path that's really struggling, and then I have this personal family path that's really struggling. And I can remember at that time thinking um, prayer I can remember going out to the back of uh, my house in New Jersey after hearing that we would check my son's uh, statistics and vitals and trying to figure out you know, whether he was going to need another surgery or not. And each time that we would check, the news just seemed to be one bad uh, piece of news after another. And I can remember going out in the back deck and just uh, sort of yelling at God, saying, God, you tell me if I have the faith of a mustard seed. I've been praying for the faith of a mustard seed, all right? And I pray for that and pray for that, and yet you don't hear me. And my son continues to have all these issues that are going on. And at that time, you know, doctors, they're protecting themselves, so there's no hope. They don't give hope. Uh, we were just looking for hope. And I can remember really losing um, what I felt was the power of prayer. I was wondering, I questioned, what good is prayer? I mean, God, you're gonna do what you wanna do, no matter what I ask, what I, what I do, you're gonna do what you're gonna do. And so I had this struggle um, with a career and with my family and wondering, um, you know, about prayer. It was, it was um, hitting me at my core. 
you know. And I grew up always believing that, and here I am in that position and wondering, where are you, all right? Um, so I, I made it through that period of time. Every six months, my son would get uh, checked. And uh, at 11 months was his last surgery. And so as time continued to go on, I never lost the, the doubt. I believe God was there. But as far as my communications with him in prayer, I, I, just, didn't, I just didn't have that belief anymore. And it, it really hit me. Um, and then uh, he was seven years old and I was sitting in the doctor's office. Um, and he had just gone through a, a round of tests and uh, the doctor came in. He sat down and said, Jason's doing really well. Jeff, if Jason was in a room with a hundred other kids with the same issue, and he was in there with a hundred other doctors, they would say unanimously, what, what, what's he doing here? Why is he here? Because he looks so good. And he looked at me, the doctor looked at me, and he said, Jeff, he said, you know, he's a miracle. We'll be right back with more of Jeff's story and how the power of prayer took him to the Super Bowl, right after this brief message about a new edition of Jesus Calling. Are you looking to introduce a friend or loved one to the peace that can be found by spending time with God daily? There's a beautiful new edition of Jesus Calling that makes a gorgeous gift for someone who might be seeking a new perspective for a new year. It's the same Jesus Calling daily devotional that has inspired over 25 million readers, now updated with a lovely fabric cover and eye-catching foil with feminine floral touches. This elegant new version also features large text and written out scripture verses with each passage. For more information about this stunning new edition of Jesus Calling, visit JesusCalling.com Botanical. That's JesusCalling.com Botanical. Now, let's get back to the second half of our program with Jeff Hostetler. The uh, seventh year of my career, uh, you know, we came into the season and uh, I was the backup at the time and played real well during the, the um, uh, preseason. So I, I felt really good about that and felt like I deserved an opportunity to play and I even had the head coach at that time tell me that uh, I deserved to see the, the, the field. To, uh, to play, but I was also behind a guy that was playing really, really well. And so I didn't know if I was gonna have any opportunities or not, but I felt better as to where I was professionally. Um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, I think it was somewhere around the third or fourth game of the season, um, Phil Sims was the starter. He went down, I came in, and uh, we ended up winning a game. We were down 19 to 10 with five minutes left in the game and uh, was able to bring us back and win the game with the last uh, second field goal. And so it was, a, um, it was an awesome opportunity for me to go out and show and do something that I've always wanted to do, but never had the opportunity. Uh, about a couple, two, three weeks later, uh, out of the blue, we're in the middle of a game. Sims is, is fine, he's playing, and Parcells yelled out, Hostetler, you're in. Um, he was testing me, and this was during a game where the outcome was not decided and uh, gave me the opportunity, came in. Uh, Phil wasn't hurt, went in. Uh, we drove the field, uh, uh, I scored on a uh, scramble. And um, it, it gave me a lot of confidence because I knew the guys around me all believed that I could play. And my head coach believed that I could play. And he was testing me and he put me in and I passed. God taught me so many things during that period of time. Uh, things that I could never ever have been able to understand or fathom uh, or believe and uh, talk about patience and perseverance and, and dedication and, and belief in uh, your self-worth. Uh, my mom used to tell me this when I was in uh, high school. Whenever I'd leave at night to go out uh, with my buddies, she would tell me, remember who you are and whose you are. And it used to really bother me because she was always putting that in my head before I left. And how could I go out and do something that I knew that they wouldn't approve of when she's telling me, remember who you are and whose you are. And I remembered who I was, and I know I was, I was God's. And I, I know where I came from, and I know whose I am. Having a constant at home with mom and dad telling me that uh, God's got a plan for you, son. I mean, um, my mom was constantly praying for me and constantly um, sending me little quotes and sending me verses and, and encouraging me and telling me God's, God's gonna reveal it to you. Um, just stay focused, um, stay diligent. 
and um, it's an emotional time because uh, um, we ended up getting into the playoffs. Um, and at that time, uh, our team was struggling somewhat. And so when Phil went down, there was this outpouring of negativity. Um, how could they, they've lost all their opportunities to win this Super Bowl, uh, to get into the playoffs, win a Super Bowl, because now they have a backup that has never played the game. And um, so it was a tough time, uh, but it was also a time that I was looking forward to. And I, I felt like God had prepared me for that. And my mom uh, especially was, was behind uh, the scenes there, constantly uplifting me in prayer and uh, continuing to throw verses at me and, and encourage. And so um, through the uh, season, we ended up winning our last two games of the season. And then uh, we played the Chicago Bears in our first playoff game. And I played really, really well. And next week we're playing the San Francisco 49ers who are going for a three-peat. Uh, they had won the last two Super Bowls and heavily favored against Joe Montana. And there was all this negative stuff about the comparison between him and me and that we weren't gonna have a chance. We had played them earlier in the season and lost. And so there was no chance, no chance at all. And yet uh, I felt like God had me there for a reason. And, and uh, our team felt like, hey, we're going out. We're a different team. Uh, that's why you play the game. And so we went out, we're playing, and uh, we're in the third quarter, I believe, um, fourth quarter, something like that, and I drop back to, to pass, and uh, a guy comes in, hits me right on the knee, uh, straight on, and I go down. I heard a pop and felt burning, and I knew uh, from my playing days, knew what an injury was like, knew what a tear uh, of a ligament was, uh, was like, and I knew I was done. And I, I remember just laying there. I was still laying on the ground and just um, broken because I thought, God, after waiting all this time and having this opportunity and being so close um, to go out like this, uh, I just, I couldn't speak. Uh, I was devastated. And I remember laying there and laying there and laying there and thinking, uh, what am I gonna do? And, and just being heartbroken and then all of a sudden, uh, the doctors are there and they're asking me questions and I, 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 I'm not responding. And then I just felt this, this tingling come down through me and just this peace and um, was able to get up and, and start to walk off. And <clears throat> it didn't feel right, but yet I felt like, you know, I might be able to do this. Um, I knew something wasn't right, but I felt, you know, maybe I can continue and was able to get onto the sideline and felt like, okay, I think it's stable enough. I'm going to go was able to go back out, lead us back uh, to a, um, a drive at the end of the game to kick the game-winning field goal to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, the next week, we win the Super Bowl. My mom and dad are in the stands. They watch uh, their son uh, win a game, win a Super Bowl that they um, had always dreamed of. Six weeks later, my mom died. And um, so uh, it was after her funeral, I was home, and uh, we were going through some of her things. And I came across um, this little booklet, and it was her prayer journal. And uh, she was, um, it was actually her football prayer journal because uh, it was all the stats of the games that she would watch. And here, she couldn't make it out to the San Francisco game. And so she's sitting there and she's watching the game and she's got all the stats on there and she has things that people are saying. And, that, and then all of a sudden, there's this um, area at the bottom where she says, Lord, heal my son, heal my son, heal my son, all right? And you go back and you time it out and she's watching the game and she says, I go down and then it's heal my son, heal my son, heal my son. And I had that feeling come over me. Uh, that's a woman of prayer uh, uh, that believed the power of prayer. Um, she's with the Lord now, but I know uh, at that time, um, God honored her prayer and uh, she was an integral part of who I am. 1998 was my last year, and um, I uh, was going into the off season, and I determined that uh, I really didn't want to get back into it. I was at the Washington Redskins, and I didn't enjoy my time there. Um, and I thought, well, if there's another opportunity, I won't close the door, but I I'm not playing on Doran anymore. And, uh, my sons, they were a little older at the time, and they all were encouraging me to go because they could understand it more. And then uh, it was in June of, uh, of uh, 1999, 
and uh, my son Tyler was eight years old and he was at a friend's house. Uh, and we didn't know that uh, his friend was nine and they had a six wheel gator, um, an ATV, and uh, their parents had allowed them to ride it uh, without being supervised and uh, Tyler was driving and it flipped and landed on him, uh, broke his neck. Uh, he was paralyzed from the neck down and um, we, were, we were devastated. We, uh, it was one of those times where uh, I can remember sitting in the room and I see, still see Tyler's eyes just yelling, Daddy, 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 and not being able to do anything. And uh, I remember being in a uh, intensive care room with my dad and just, um, just bawling my eyes out because here I am, his dad, I'm supposed to protect him, and yet uh, I failed and he may never walk again. Um, what am I going to do? And I remember my dad telling me, uh, Jeff, you got to give it to God. You just got to give it to God. And I said, he said, whose hands would he be better in? But uh, God did amazing things. He's, uh, he's a true miracle. He would walk in here today and you would never know it. Um, doctor upon doctor has told me uh, he is a miracle. And so God's used uh, my, my life playing, um, my personal life. Uh, he's taken me through all these ups and downs. Um, but the one constant is that he's always been there, uh, always been there. He has things in control. Um, and when we need him, um, you know, he is there. We just need to trust in him. And uh, at times that's difficult to do, but uh, he's proven himself time in and time out. That's what started our Haas Foundation, um, the, the things that we had gone through as a family and realized you know, how difficult it is on, on the, the core family. Um, not only my wife and I, uh, but the other kids. Um, how difficult it was for them to go through things because when your child's going through something, you know, your whole focus is on your child and you've got other kids that you kind of leave by the wayside. You don't leave them by the wayside, but you know, you can only do certain things. And so we think about those times and how difficult uh, it was. and. Uh, I see how difficult it is on families when uh, they're going through things that are similar and how many families are torn apart. And so uh, we started a foundation uh, called the Haas Foundation to uh, try to help those families that are going through something traumatic uh, as an injury or an illness so that we can kind of um, supplement some of the things that are going on uh, so that they don't have to worry about those things, so that we can uh, uh, give them the opportunity to, to be with those that, that, are, that are struggling. Well, I, and right now we kind of shifted uh, some directions with our Haas Foundation and we put in a family resource center inside uh, our hospital here at WVU uh, Medicine Children's. And uh, it's there to, to be right there with the families so that we can meet some of their needs. We, we do laundry, we provide food vouchers, we provide um, educational uh, tools and things like that. Any type of uh, financial assistance that's available, um, housing. So. Uh, we're real involved with that, and we uh, started our first fundraiser this year. Um, we, my connection between athletics and the hospital, I'm trying to um, encourage that with WVU Athletics, and so uh, we're engaging them. Uh, the football team's been coming over to visit uh, on a more regular basis. We're doing a fundraiser with uh, the head coach and uh, their coaching staff. Um, so uh, we're, we're trying to get uh, together and m meld those two, uh, athletes and families that, and children that are going through difficult times because it's a win-win for both. Uh, each one of them has an impact on the other. And for the athletes, it gives them perspective as to, um, hey, that interception really wasn't that important or you know, that loss or, or you know, um, that missed tackle or that missed basket, that really doesn't, uh, um, hold a whole lot of weight in the whole realm of things when I see what this family's going through. And then, you know, on the family side and the kids side, whenever they see these athletes walking in and that big smile comes on their, their son or daughter, um, it's invaluable, you know. And so uh, trying to meld the two together and, uh, is a win-win and uh, they're doing a real good job here. Football provided me um, with a uh, an opportunity, uh, actually it kind of forced me into uh, having more of a devotional time because it was so tough on me. Uh, and uh, having that uh, be, uh, having that have passed 
and getting into life without football, uh, having a devotional time at times has been a struggle. It's just, uh, um, you know, trying to find the time. You get so busy and you get going here and there and with your kids and this and that, and yet I know how important it is. So it was, uh, for me, it wasn't as consistent as it needs to be or needed to be. And um, one of the greatest things happens, has happened to me in the last, uh, since the first of the year was Jesus Calling. Uh, that devotional, it's, it's given me the opportunity, it never leaves my kitchen counter because I come out in the morning and there it is and I open it up and try to be consistent in reading. And um, it's been an awesome um, instructional guideline for me. It gives me a perspective of, of what God may be saying to me just on a one-to-one -one basis, you know, and how he might uh, um, verbalize that to me. It's a different perspective, um, but the thing I think that I take away from it the most is uh, there's so much in there about just trusting me, you know, and he's constantly, uh, the devotional just tells you, uh, as he would say, to, just trust me, trust me. And uh, as humans, it's a difficult thing to do because we always want to have our hands on something or we want to um, control it in one way or another. We feel like we can do it. I want control over what my day is going to look like, you know, who I talk to, what my time schedule is and that. And uh, at times you can't do that. And the devotional has been a, a, a constant God just actually talking to me and telling me, trust me. And then uh, the one I think that sticks out, and I can't remember what day it was, or, but uh, I was struggling with something. Um, we had just lost a, a, a pup. Um, you know, we're, we're dog lovers, and uh, he was an eight-year-old boxer, and we just loved him. And uh, it was emotionally devastating. It came out of blue, out of the blue. And uh, I can just remember reading the devotional, and it just said, at those times when you're struggling in that, just say, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. And... Uh, uh, I can remember just, you know, at times, just help me, Lord. And it was a constant throughout the day. And I felt God's presence there. And um, so there's been uh, great day-to-day -day, um, tips to uh, continue to, to think and get your mind right and, and trust that God's got uh, your life in His hands and He's got a plan for you. And it's in His, uh, it's His control. As a starter, it's easy. When you're every day, you're out there and you know that you're gonna be out on the field or out on the court and have the opportunity to play. But as a backup, when you don't have that opportunity and you don't know when that's gonna come, it's difficult. God's got a plan for you. It may not be exactly how you thought it was gonna be in your mind, but believe me, it's a better plan than what you could ever imagine. And God's gonna take you to places that you never thought you could be. Just be consistent, be prepared, be dedicated to it, and know that you're having an impact. You're gonna have an impact on all your buddies around you because they're constantly watching you, whether you know it or not. And how you react is, is gonna uh, uh, give it a lasting impression on them. It's gonna make a mark. It's gonna leave an imprint. I'm just so blessed. You know, I just, um, the Lord's been so good. And He's taken me uh, to places I've never dreamed that I would be. Um, he's provided me with things that I never dreamed that I would ever have. Um, uh, a wife that is um, my best friend, um, a family that I grew up with, a, a, a background that I, I would never trade for anything. And uh, it's not been easy, you know. There's been all these ups and downs and, and life-threatening situations and, and difficult times, and yet, I can honestly say I would never trade any of them uh, because I, I can see how God has used those and um, how He has blessed me or others through those things. And uh, I wouldn't be doing the things that I do today uh, if it weren't for my mom and dad uh, dragging us out of the house sometimes by taking the ear and pulling us and saying, listen, we're going to this family. They're struggling right now. We're gonna go take them some food and some gifts. You're coming and never wanting to do that. Come on, mom. And um, you know, it changed me. Uh, remembering who you are and whose you are. It changed me. To learn more about Jeff Hostetler and the Haas Foundation, please visit haasfoundation.org. Next time on Jesus Calling Stories of Faith, we talk with NASCAR driver, Michael McDowell. 
We caught up with Michael at Bristol Motor Speedway, where he recounted the ups and downs of his career and how through it all, he's learned to surrender control and rely on God for true success. So in 2008, I was a rookie in the Cup Series, you know, sort of, I've made it, I've arrived, I'm at the highest level, and uh, the second race into the season, I had a terrifying, horrific crash, uh, one of the worst crashes in NASCAR history, and um, nobody thought I'd walk away, and um, nothing short of miraculous, you know, to get out of the car and, and to race the next day, and so that was a turning point for me to realize that this career and this platform that I have isn't about me and it's not about my career. It's about, you know, sharing the gospel and being able to do that um, with the tools and abilities and platform that he's given me. Thank you for watching Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. Be sure to join us every first and third Sunday of each month for a new Jesus Calling Story of Faith, debuting live on the Jesus Calling Facebook page. You can also find inspirational stories from a different guest weekly on the Jesus Calling audio podcast, which appears on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and other popular podcast providers. If you'd like to learn more about how to listen and subscribe to our podcast, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Jesus Calling Book and look for our instructional video on how to subscribe and listen to our podcast weekly.